From the kitchen, an American classic, Meatloaf. Here to share his secrets is Chris Kimball, editor-in-chief of Cooks Illustrated and host of America's Test Kitchen. Chris, good morning. Thanks. Tell me your secrets. <laughs> hey, you didn't tell me I'd have to do this. Uh, <laughs> this is an entirely different segment. <laughs> yes. All right. What are the? Let's stick with meatloaf. Here. <laughs> what are the key ingredients in the classic meatloaf? Well, just think of meatloaf as this big hamburger that you overcook. That's the concept. You cook it to 160 degrees, not medium rare. So there are four things you got to know to make that really turn out well so it doesn't get tough and dry out. Okay. First of all, you start with meatloaf mix, which is half beef, then a quarter veal, and a quarter pork. The reason you do that is if you do all beef, it's, as I said, it's like a hamburger. It's tight. Oh, it's too tough. It's too tough. And actually, if you only have beef, there's a trick. You can use a half a teaspoon of powdered gelatin with the beef, and that will help keep it a little bit softer and moister. So that's really? a little, you know, we oh. found that in the test kitchen about a year ago. Okay. But meatloaf mix is great. Uh, the pork adds a little flavor and fat. The veal adds gelatin. Okay. Because it's a young meat, has a lot of gelatin in it. What else can you add to make sure it's not too well, dense? Well, the, the two other really important things. One is uh, a cereal, a grain. We tried grape nuts, corn flakes. Uh, we tried everything. It turns out that saltines, about two-thirds of a cup, work great. You can also use fresh breadcrumbs uh, as well. So that's important. The other thing that goes with it, and this is a, an old Italian trick called panade, when they make meatballs, they take bread and milk and put them together, and that helps the protein not get so tight when you cook it. So we found a half a cup of milk or yogurt with the two-thirds cup of saltines or fresh breadcrumbs works really well. We tried alcohol, of course. We always try that at the test kitchen. So, How'd that work? Uh, the, the alcohol was great, but not in the meatloaf because it doesn't really burn <laughs> off. Uh, everything tastes better with alcohol. But we but stick good with for milk. you for trying. We tried. So that's okay. the basic concept is that a couple eggs, of course, and that's the basic formula. Two pounds of meat, a little bit of bread, milk, two eggs. That's the basic formula for me. And that'll keep it from getting too dry? Yeah, what you want is to have that filler. Some people think it's just to save money, but it's really to, to have a nice, soft, moist texture. Okay. So now cooking it, it turns out that if you cook it in a pan like this, a loaf pan, you see a lot of grease. Yeah. So it really stews the meat in its own juices. Right. Which we don't want to do. So we found that doing it on a, on a half baking sheet like this with aluminum foil, or you could put a rack on this as well and just free forming it like I just did. Uh, then all the, the grease and the juices sort of go out and you don't end up steaming it in a nice crust. And we're going to glaze this. This is just brown sugar, vinegar, a little uh, tomato uh, ketchup. Okay. Glaze it and we're going to put some uh, bacon on the top as well. Uh -huh. We have to, you know, adding pork, by the way, even dessert sometimes, adding pork. <laughs> Makes we, it better. Yeah, I just like, there isn't many things in life that are not better with pork. So we'll I do totally that. I totally agree. Right? Okay. So you glaze it up yeah, just like and then that, we'll not just too take, thick. Mm -hmm. Take the bacon and you want to tuck it under. So like that, and then we'll just continue with the other slices all the way through. Mm -hmm. They get bacon wrapped, which is what we have right there. Okay. So there you go. So after you do all that, what should you be preheating the oven to? Uh, it's 350 degrees for about an hour. Okay. And uh, but we have some variations on the theme. This is the basic meatloaf uh, that we came up with. Now we have a few others. Okay. However. So this is after. 350 degrees for an hour. For an hour right. It should come out looking like yeah, this. Yeah, and you can use an insta read thermometer. That's a great tip in the kitchen. You know, use an insta read thermometer, put it right in the middle. Should read 160. Okay. So it's fully cooked. Now, I've never made meatloaf. No. I know you find that shocking, this is, but I, can I tell you? This is, this is a, I, I have. Harry's falling off his chair. I have eaten my share of meatloaf, and I think the greatest meatloaf I've ever had is a recipe from my girlfriend, Bodie Boatwright. She had a dinner party once where she served meatloaf two ways, among other things. With, the, with tomato sauce and then with brown gravy and mushrooms. And, I, and it was like a double fister. It was like, a nya, 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 you know, dinner. And she gave us the recipe, which she called, which is right here. Yep. This is the one with the tomato sauce. She calls it a Sicilian style meatloaf. What does that mean? And Sicilian style means you, you shape it out into like 10 by 12 and then you fill it. In this way, your friend put actually grated mozzarella cheese, about nine ounces, and then rolled it up. And, and then cooked it. So it's got a secret, well, Harry's probably discovering right now, Maggie, there's a secret inside, which in this case is cheese. And you can uh -huh. also top it with cheese as well, but Sicilians rolled it up and they had a filling. Okay, tell me about the other two meatloafs that you have brought here. Well, what is this one? With this the is the, the formula for the basic meat is the same as this, more or less. This is called a frosted meatloaf, which it's is a whole category, which is mashed potatoes with a little cheese in them. You cook the meatloaf to 140, frost it, finish it in the oven. Okay, that's why it looks like that on the outside. And this one? That's Mrs. Rockefeller's. That was the, uh, the wife of Winthrop Rockefeller, former governor of Arkansas in the 1960s. She came up with a kitchen sink style which means she has onion soup mix, curry powder, hot sauce, rye bread, 
cottage cheese, oh. sour cream, I could go on and on. She's got everything in there. There's no restraint here. This is without, without borders, meatloaf okay, without borders. Let's go to America's Test Kitchen tasters. <laughs> Harry know. and Maggie, yeah. they have tried all four. Yes. Now, which one is the best, Maggie? Before I even saw that your recipe had the bacon, this was my hands down favorite. The one, the one bacon. Ahead. Chris made, okay. Mm -hmm. bacon. All right. You? Do you have a second? Second favorite, no. I'd have to say uh, Bodie Boatwrights. It's mm. kind of like a meatloaf parm. Yeah, there you yeah go. good. Number two. <laughs> yeah, I'll I didn't like Rockefellers at all. Crazy about Rockefellers. Really? Loved really? it a lot, but really, really like the meatloaf <gasps> with the potatoes we on the top. We have the complete opposite mm. of Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly There's only right. Guy, you guys should be wow. on tasting pills. There's sure, can I get your plate it. or off your dessert <laughs> or anything else? Yeah. Thank you very breakers. much for coming tonight. We appreciate it. He knows how to clear from the right. Yeah, thank you, Chris Kimball, thank you so much.